All right, boys, back out here. I've actually been out here a few times. I think I'm just gonna start the video here. If you didn't know, I was in bed for like a solid eight days. I got the cooties, and then I still wasn't feeling good for like another two days, and then after that, we got like two and a half feet of snow. Like, not even joking. So I've been out plowing, then I broke my straight blade. I went and picked up a V blade. Then we got another like eight inches the other day, and it's just, I've just been too busy. I've been out here a couple times here and there, just really nothing worth recording. But I have a couple mistakes I gotta fix and a couple problems I gotta check out. The alternator, I went over it. I might actually throw up a clip here and there. I recorded some of it. I took the power line off. It was completely corroded. I cleaned that all up. I did check my fuses, like you guys said. Um, it's fine. I mean, I guess this relay could be bad, but this alternator still, even after I cleaned everything up and I put another ground on here, a better ground. You guys see that ground right there? I sand down the body and I put it underneath the radiator mount. I got it grounded right there. Um, I checked all the connections. I turned it on. Still was only getting 11 coming from the alternator. Should be getting some like 13, 14. When I was rushing to put this all back together, I forgot to tighten up that uh, coolant hose on the thermostat and I was running it and it blew off and it was just a mess of coolant everywhere me throwing a fit so I probably won't use any of that footage because it's just me cussing the whole time I do have a couple other mistakes I gotta go over I just need to go over everything the oil pressure sensor is on upside down I'll show you so right there you see that oil pressure sensor right there I got that on upside down it's resting up against the axle so that whole like uh bracket or uh, connection I pretty much just need to take the oil feed for the turbo off and then spin that whole bracket one more turn tighten it up one more and get that oil pressure sensor up to the top gotta do an oil change there's something else that I'm forgetting oh I gotta bleed the brakes because I had the rear calipers off and then I just need to go over everything for some reason I feel like there's something else I forgot that I didn't do I don't know all right let me uh, drain this oil how many of you guys actually think I'll make it? Think I'll make that? Probably not. Let's see how much of a mess I can make, I guess. I actually want to grab like a little sample. Let me find a little cup. I made it too, by the way. It smells like gas a little bit. Some bearing material. A lot of that discoloration is going to be that, uh, it's going to be that, uh, assembly lube or grease no metal shavings anywhere we're in pretty good shape boys you know why is changing your oil still such a mess like you would think people would come up with better solutions by now to do this without just getting covered in oil all right well i uh i just got a text i got like six more places that i need to go plow here in a little bit so i'm gonna try to do as much as I possibly can until I gotta go. So I don't know if you guys can see or not. I kind of just got the camera up there. The turbo line needs to come off. That oil pressure gauge can probably stay on. I think I'm just gonna flip this whole bracket over and have the oil pressure gauge up top. I got like a deep socket on there with a small extension. It seems to fit perfectly around the drive shaft and then gets on that banjo bolt. So we gotta break that, oh, the whole thing's gonna turn. And so I keep forgetting about that every time I've touched this thing. You gotta put a wrench on the bottom of it too. It's a 19, you gotta hold the whole, I don't know what to call this thing. It's like a block, like this whole oil block. Okay, I'm hoping I can just turn this whole thing. I'm not gonna be able to without getting that. This other sensor off. All right, yeah, I gotta take this off. I don't know what I was thinking. I was hoping I was just going to be able to turn it and leave this all together. All this for that little mistake. All I had to do was look at a picture. I bet you if I Google that right now, there's a picture with that sensor sitting on top. And there's probably a couple of you that even noticed it and are sitting here laughing about it. You guys probably seen me put it on there like five videos ago before I put the engine in the car. Instead of saying, hey, flip that over before you get in the car. It was just sat there. I was like, ah, oh, he's going to rip that off on his axle. Well, I caught it before I drove down the street, asshole. Okay, now that I got that out the way, hopefully I can just spin this now. Instead of having to take the other one off. This is tight. That's what he said. 
Yes, I did it. Childish. Oh, look at that. You're jealous. You guys are all jealous. I did it. Uh, maybe not. Look at that. Don't be jealous, okay? Don't be jealous that I got these skills. I'm literally just talking to myself right now. I'm bragging to myself. That's how bored I am. Okay, then put your banjo bull back in. Use new crush washers. I cleaned that, those threads on the oil pump all out with alcohol. I wiped this down with some alcohol. Gotta put some red silicone on there, give it a couple minutes, then put this on. I think I've recorded stuff like this a hundred times. This is one where you wanna put it on the threads so it oozes out. All right, then let's thread this back on. You don't need to like go torquing this down or nothing. Just get it to where it's like kind of snug with a finger. Okay, that's all hooked up. I don't know if you guys can see the wires or not, but I uh, it'll be a second your world. But I gotta go. I gotta go plow again. By the way, I actually recorded all of this. I recorded every time I plow. If you guys want me to throw a video together, let me know. It's got like six inches of snow. It's the whiteout. It's just freaking snowing out the ass. But yeah, if you guys would be interested in that. Let me know, I can edit together a video of me like using the straight blade and four feet of snow to breaking it to me pick up the V blade. But yeah, it'll be a second your world and I'm going to start taking that alternator off as soon as I come back. See you in one second. Look at this. Came to get my own damn shop. Jesus, that's like... Jesus, that's like one of the icicles that'll kill you. Okay, boys, kind of back out here. It's been a couple days. I'm gonna take this all day off and go get it tested. If it's good, then I know it's the relay. If I get the relay and it's still not good, I just gotta start chasing wires. I mean, the car's old. Some of these wires are, are, are brittle, especially ones that have been sitting by the exhaust forever. I'm gonna get this off. I can't really record it. I think I'm just gonna take this whole bracket off and then drop it down from the bottom is what I think I'm gonna do. I'm having a real blonde moment today. I cannot figure out how to get this alternator out. I ended up taking the bracket off because it was too big. And before one of you guys say that since I painted the bracket, it's probably not grounded. Everywhere that touches metal, I sand it down to bare metal. Everything's grounded good, even on the block. So, I don't know. Is it can't fit through the top. It's like you gotta pull your radiator out to get the alternator out. Yeah, there's like no way to get it out of here. How the hell are you supposed to get it out? Imagine if you had your AC on. You definitely couldn't get it out. You have to pull the radiator to get your alternator out. I don't think I've ever took it off in the car. Is it because I got an upgraded radiator? If I had the factory radiator, would it slide out? Maybe. I have no idea how I'm gonna get back in there. I ended up having to take the alternator, or the, the alternator. I ended up having to take the tensioner pulley off, then loosen those, take those two bolts out, then loosen that bolt so that can slide out the way, and then I barely got it to fit. It's gonna be a nightmare to get back in. I actually think I'm gonna take the AC bracket off to get it back in, then put the AC bracket back on. You guys can't see anything. I was just talking for no reason. Take your tensioner pulley off. Then take that bracket off. You gotta take the bracket off the alternator. You just gotta take everything apart. It's a pain. I sure recorded it and showed you guys how to do it, but I didn't know how to do it. The Duramax is out there running. I figured this is gonna be like five minutes. It's turned into like an hour and a half. All right, let's take this and have it tested. All right, I'm also gonna take this relay with me. I should take this fuse with me since a lot of you guys say this fuse is going bad on all your cars. I don't know how to get it out. I'm taking this for sure. I'm sitting here trying to rush around. I'm pretty sure I just broke this fuse. I wanted to take it with me, so I just grabbed it with a pair of pliers and pulled on it. I didn't know it was bolted in. So there's me being an idiot some more. Your fuse is bolted in. It doesn't look like it's burnt anywhere though. Yeah, I took it apart. Just in case I couldn't like see down in there, maybe one of the sides were busted. But no, it's fine. This is fine. It's gotta be this or the alternator or bad wire, like I said. All right, I'm gonna run the auto parts store, have that tested. Alternator failed on everything. Everything, everything, everything. 
it's only putting out eight volts, 8.47. Let's see, fail, fail, fail. Which is ridiculous because this is brand new from Mitsubishi. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do yet. Should I just like send this back and get it replaced? It's only putting out 110. And see, the problem with that is, is that I got upgraded injectors. I got upgraded fuel pump. I'm got a standalone ECU. I got how many gauges running? I got a wide band. Should I jump up to 200? And if I do that, then I have to upgrade my fuse, which I can't. I bought one of these just for just to have it. I bought another 120 amp just to have it because I was looking on the forums and people said that these were blowing. If I jump up to two. 200 amp i'm gonna have to get like a breaker instead because they don't make these in anything higher than 140 so i would end up having to like open up my fuse box get those two wires out of there set like a 220 amp breaker in there to run a 200 amp alternator i don't know i might actually end this video here um leave it down in the comments what you guys think i should do about the alternator should i jump up i don't know how to even figure out like what amperage i need like i'd have to add up every injector i need to see if they're putting out more which they probably shouldn't because i got stock replacement injectors how much more power is my 360 liter flex fuel pump pushing how much more power am i pushing out of a wide band i don't know just leave it down in the comments I'm just sitting here and i got more plowing to go do so i think i'm gonna end this video here and wait to get an alternator until i see your guys' comments so i will uh see you in the next one and then um i'm pretty sure i said this once but if you guys want to see me plowing for like the past three days let me know if enough of you guys actually want to see it i've recorded everything i pretty much got that always running when i'm plowing in case there's an accident or something i will uh see you guys in the next one